Hey everyone, welcome back to Installation 00, and I just wanted to give you a more detailed overview of exactly what our intentions are with Project ODST going forward. Now again, to really briefly summarise, as many of you are probably already aware, Project Mjolnir is still being developed, but we're having some delays because we're waiting on a few external contractors to sort a few things out externally to us. So in addition to Project Mjolnir, I'm also now undertaking Project ODST, which is another venture into developing uh, ODST Battle Armor with modern technology as close as is practically possible to what we see in-game. That was relatively straightforward. I was expecting that to be a little bit more drawn out. I'll try to sum it up like that in the future. So Project ODST, we're already developing, and it allows me then to develop, deliver content to you in regards to what we're doing to make halo technology real more frequently because i've i've felt really bummed out and, and and quite stressed and quite upset really that i haven't been able to deliver as many updates to you as i would have liked because i have a certain pitch and a certain cadence of working that i found tends to be a little faster than most people's and when you have to rely upon external contractors to sort things on their end delays are kind of inevitable Especially when you consider that I moved house, you know, in in December, so there were going to be delays before and after. Especially considering that you know Christmas, the holidays were right around the time I moved as well. So it, delays are expected, but ODST is my opportunity to kind of make good on that and start developing other stuff, other technology from the Halo universe and make it real. So I wanted to give you guys a little bit more detail into exactly what we're going to do with the ODST armor which is going to be different from Project Mjolnir. Now, obviously, we have very similar systems from one to the other. We have the environment system, the heating and cooling system, the personal heating, heating and cooling system that is pretty much identical from Project Mjolnir to Project ODST. I'm going to make another version of that heating and cooling system for application with the ODST armor. So we've already kind of done the legwork there. It's just re replicating what we've already done. A lot of the HUD systems only need minor tweaking, for example, for the ODST armor, versus what we've already developed for Project Mjolnir and the Project Mjolnir helmet. A lot of the other systems that are involved in ODST armor, as I covered in a recent video, uh, whether or not we can make ODST armor real, where I kind of informally announced this project as well, a lot of those other systems are also very, very available, very freely available at this time and can most definitely be made real. Ultimately, the, the synopsis of that of that video was, yes, we can. That's, that's basically the, the point I was trying to drive. But this is what we intend to do going forward. So we've kind of got two different versions of ODST armor in mind, more based on their function than their form. So, for example, if you look at the... ODST armor from Halo 2 Anniversary. You can see it's much more that there's there's more it's more fatigues with battle armor on top. It doesn't really look like it's vacuum rated per se. It doesn't really look like it would be suitable to be used in space or at high altitudes where the air is thin. But it does seem very functional as a combat armor. And yet if you look at the ODST armor from say Halo 3 ODST it looks, with the exception of the fingerless gloves, it looks like it, it's much more suited to exo-atmospheric operations. It looks like it could have its own environment systems built in, its own sealed atmosphere. It looks like it could be vacuum rated. Now, adding vacuum rating to an armor platform immediately complicates the process of development. Now, it's not that we're going to design a Halo 2 anniversary style of ODST and a Halo 3 ODST version of ODST, but more so it's the it's the function behind them. The, the Halo 2 anniversary armor looks like it's more for terrestrial application, for actual application on a battlefield, versus the ODST armor from Halo 3 ODST, which looks like it's more suitable for exo-atmospheric operations. The armor that we will develop will be irrevocably ODST in appearance. It will look very much like, you know, your normal ODST armor. Maybe a little bit darker in shade than grey. So it will be ODST armor. It will be majoritively styled directly after the most well-known ODST variant, and that's the ODST variant from Halo 3 ODST, or Halo 3 in general, versus the Halo 2 Anniversary style. But the applications of the technology used inside it 
we may make two versions where one is more terrestrial, one is vacuum rated. The terrestrial one obviously is much more achie much more achievable than the vacuum rated version. But that's not to say that the vacuum rated version is unachievable because it most definitely isn't unachievable. So I just wanted to get that out in the open to start with. So with the helmet, for example, we're going to be putting titanium panels into the helmet. There are also going to be com composite components for ballistic protection. So like Kevlar helmets that are used on the battlefield at the moment to help protect soldiers from ricochets and, 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 and shrapnel and, and things like that. We'll be using composite materials similar to that. We'll also have mounting points on the helmet for up-armoured modules. Now, we don't really see a lot of that happening with ODST armour, but we have all intents and purposes to design features into this particular platform to make it more modular in that respect. So, for example, again, this is just a cosplay helmet. This is not, you know, what we've already done. But for sakes of demonstration, we'll put a mounting point on the top here so you can actually put hard armour plates and we'd be tempted then to actually put an up armoured module that's made of the same ceramic armour like AR, AR500 armour for example that would be then mounted on, mounted. I think it was AR500 I'm self, I'm just questioning you'll be able to correct me, I'm sure you will but there'll be a mounting point on the front, on the top here for putting up armor modules. We're also planning on putting mounting points on the side so you can put like torches or other fixtures onto the helmet. In addition to this, as far as rebreather is concerned, the helmet will be fitted with normal HEPA class 15 air fil normal normal HEPA class 15 air filtration systems like we did with Project Mjolnir, and this will be the intakes for the um, the air filtration systems. However, we duly note that. It would be good if the helmet, in some degree, had an ability to have those those filters upgraded to to some degree. To be something similar to the CBRN modules that we see as kind of additional fixtures for Spartan helmets in many of the games at the moment. And now C CBRN stands for Chemical, Biological, Radiological, and Nuclear. It's basically a filtration system that filters all of those kind of unpleasant things and un unpleasant nasties from the air so that you're not breathing them in and that will effectively clip over where these intakes are go around here and the intake itself will be just about where your mouth would be if you were wearing this helmet so that's another thing we plan on doing peripheral technologies basically that would be be able to be used with the odst armor on top of that we also are already tentatively looking into making the armor what i what i'm currently nicknaming the Gungnir ODST and that's rather than having a visor a, a physical um, glass visor on the helmet but actually having a blast plate that would fit literally underneath the brim here all the way around and along the bottom here and would be an entire face shield it would then look something more akin to the engineer helmet from Halo 4 if you guys remember that not the greatest example but it will look something similar to that and we'll actually have a pass through then for cameras mounted on that blast plate that will then translate to the mixed reality headset that's being worn inside which we still plan on being a teardown version of the HoloLens 2. That then means that we can then adjust and adapt a lot of the HUD systems that we've already developed for Project Mjolnir for the ODST platform. In the situation that we still have the visor involved however, the blast plate itself will be connectable and disconnectable so it's actually again modular it's something you can choose to have or choose not to have if you choose not to have it i've already found a company that actually develop mirror glass intelligent mirror glass which when you put a charge through it mirrors on the outside but is still semi-transparent you can see through it I've, I've identified a company that can do it can do it with the kind of specs that we need for a visor like this so the actual mirrored polarization that we see in game for halo odst for odst armor helmets that's a thing that can happen so we're already we're already identifying companies that can help us out in some regard the visor itself will actually be the clearer visor will actually be so to speak the ballistic visor will be again made of sapphire glass very similar to what we're going to do with project Mjolnir. it will have all the hud um, communications gear built inside as well so like hearing protection for the person wearing the helmet so that you know the sounds of guns firing doesn't translate entirely through the helmet and, and semi-deafen you or rupture your eardrums but also have communications gear built in so you can talk to your squad mates and also speak out loud we'll also have internal shock mounting 
uh, built into the helmet as well so that if you are hit with a stray round and it knocks knocks your helmet you're not knocked unconscious in the process because that's something important to consider so that's just the helmet systems that we're looking into on top of that we're already looking into a way for this armor to be able to self-support now again we're not powering this armor this isn't going to be a powered exoskeleton but we are looking at a self-supportive structure so a semi-powered or a passive support structure that will hold the armor so the person wearing it doesn't really feel it but also generates just enough passive power that it can carry its own weight without literally having to be muscled to be moved by the wearer if that makes sense and we've already got a full body skeleton exoskeleton in full development uh, afforded by again one of the guys who have jumped on board to help with project Mjolnir we're we're managing to, to bridge that gap over to ODST so again we're managing to make a lot more a lot more progress in a much shorter space of time because of the work we've already laid down. On top of that, the armor plates, we're looking at making the, the big central plate of the chest. I've actually got a cosplay that I'm building at the moment. I'll use as demonstration. So this is so this big plate here that would be, you know, mounted on the chest. We're gonna make that one out of probably a ceramic, very similar to your current um, your current plate carriers that you get in ballistic armor underneath that we might have a tr we're, we're thinking about having a titanium or ceramic trauma plate directly over the heart again for the sakes of just additional protection a little bit of up, additional up armoring but majoritively we're looking at using uh, kevlar plates so kevlar reinforced composites or ultra high molecular weight polyethylene reinforced composites so that means that we can make the plates much lighter weight. They're much easier to fabricate, but they're also providing a very high degree of ballistic protection. We're also looking at internal padding to be able to catch spool and things like that and, and designing the armor in such a way where you're, it's not likely that, for example, if you get hit, hit with a bullet directly in the center of the chest and it spools and it goes up, you don't want to catch that in the chin. So we're actually going to develop like lip armor and things like that onto the the top of that plate so it means that anything that comes up can be redirected so to speak so again we, we're redesigning the armor within within reason not terribly outside of the current design aesthetic but enough to make it more functional on the battlefield we're also looking at implementing molly webbing systems onto the armor as well so that you can still continue to carry ammunition pouches grenades and the like so it's more applicable to the modern day battlefield. The Under Armour, we're looking at using soft armors like Kevlar with a sheer thickening fluid or a dilent liquid armor. That's usually made with uh, polyethylene glycol, for example, and silica, silica particles, nanoparticles. You mix those together into a, into a thick gel and then you can impregnate Kevlar with this, this compound. And once it's hit by the ballistic projectile, because it's a non-Newtonian fluid, the silica particles, for a split second upon impact, reform their crystalline structure and, and mimic 99 point something percent the material hardness of ceramic, of, of, of ceramic silica, thereby almost acting like an instantaneous tiny hard armor plate. And it's already been proved that only three sheets of Kevlar provide the same ballistic protection as 15 sheets of normal Kevlar. So only three with sheer thickening fluid versus 15. That makes it five times more effective, while also being significantly thinner and less bulky. We're also looking into using Nomex, carbon fiber and, and uh, metal microfoils for the sakes of heat uh, heat dissipation. So being able to deal with, with for example, the heat of re-entry, so to speak, uh, as well as ambient heat from I suppose what would be classed as the orbital insertion. So the armor to a degree will be heat proof or at least fire retardant to a degree. Uh, and other aspects of that also include Demron and a vacuum seal. But again, that's that's if we if we go to that degree. If we go to the vacuum rated version, we'll want Demron as a radiation proofing and we'll most definitely want the vacuum seals to maintain life inside. We're looking more into mechanical counter pressure suits, however, because 
as opposed to using something like a fully pressurized environment for the person to move around inside of that's what we get currently with nasa eva systems for example and you're then having to fight against the the suit's own internal pressure and obviously there's only, there's only a static volume a, a constant volume inside of the suit so when you bend a joint you're effectively changing the internal surface area but the volume remains the same so that has to be moved somewhere else and it, it just becomes awkward using mechanical counter pressure suits are much more logical in that it's much less bulky relatively straightforward it still maintains the, the, the right shape and form and function of the body you can still have a membrane layer in there that actually kind of hermetically seals the body from space but you don't necessarily have to pressurize the entire the entire system but again that's if we venture into the vacuum rated version of ODST armor. If we remain with the terrestrial version, then on top of what I've already said, irrespective of the vacuum systems, we then just need the heating and cooling system, which I've already developed and just have to adapt from Project Mjolnir, and a comfort layer, a skin tight comfort layer. That's pretty straightforward. Base layers can do almost the same thing. So that gives you kind of a technical overview, roughly, of what our intentions are. Now, again, there's, there's facets of this that are that are much more complex than just me reaming this off in a in a 15 20 minute video and obviously you'll know all about that as we go through the process but i wanted to give you guys more of a fundamental understanding of our intentions for odst going forward and just how much legwork has already been done by the work we've been doing on project mjolnir so we can progress that much faster with odst than we could with mjolnir in the early days so again Thank you for your continued support of all of the projects involved with the Materials Group. Again, links to the Materials Group Patreon page is in the description down below, as well as the GoFundMe for Project Mjolnir, which is still live. Thank you again for all of your support. Thank you for all of your comments, liking, subscribing, sharing, and all together just being one of the most awesome communities out there. I'll continue to do everything I can to develop this technology and to, and to deliver to you real-life Halo technology, which is, I mean, what an awesome job that is. Thank you. Anyway, take it easy, everyone, and find peace in the domain. Thanks for watching. If you're new here and liked what you saw, go ahead and hit that like button and hit the subscribe button while you're at it so you don't miss my future uploads. Links are in the description to get connected and jump into the Discord community with me, and if you really love the content I'm making, consider supporting the channel over on Patreon for tons of awesome perks. Pop your comments down below if you have an idea of what I should cover next, and hang around for the end of the video for other suggested videos you might be interested in. Huge shouts to my patrons, Spartan10148, the metarch of my installation, Falcon, Prophet, Phantom, Thomas, Mikhail, and Irrefutable Justice, my monitors, Andrew, Cameron, Darian, Flaming Halo, Madness, Masked Owl, Michael, Spartan0137, The Cave Potato, Uwu Master, and Wolf Eclipse, my sub-monitors, my growing fleet of Strato Sentinels, my ever-vigilant Enforcers, and all the other awesome patrons that are helping to support the channel in a big, big way. Huge shout out to Todd Morrison for keeping the installation powered with that glorious vacuum energy. Much love to you all. Take it easy, everyone and find peace in the domain.